Hi, I'm Adam Whitauer. You may remember me from such Iowa State mechanical engineering videos as ME421 Hydraulics Lab or the ME421 Race Car Suspension Lab. I'm going to talk a little today about the Boyd Model 30M injection molding machine. There are a couple safety concerns to think about when you're getting this lab. First off, safety glasses, always a good idea. Uh, second, you have a burn hazard. We have plastic coming out of here at 250 degrees Celsius. And at that temperature, your flesh just kind of disintegrates. If you get any plastic on you, the skin is gone. Uh, not something you're going to want. So be very cognizant of burns, burn hazards. Uh, the other hazard in particular is ventilation. Show you the ventilation. Ventilation is very important because uh, we're dealing with melting plastics here, and I'm sure everybody's smelled burning plastic before, and that's pretty much the same thing we've got going on here. So, to take care of that, we have the vents here right next to the door, and we're just going to turn uh, a couple of them on here, probably one and two. These are numbered there. One's in the middle there, two's by those furnaces, and three is this one over here. It moves a lot of air, too, so... Uh, notice you can hear those running, and more importantly, you got quite a vacuum coming. In fact, if you're going to do any more than maybe a couple parts like we're going to be doing, it's better to just have the door open. It's a lot more effective ventilation that way, it's not trying to fight the doorway. With that out of, out of the way, uh, we have the manual. We have this uh, easy setup guide, uh, which is good enough to get you going if you're just doing basic work. Uh, the main manuals here, the IE department's taking care of that. Um, and as far as basic operation, we'll talk about startup here. First thing to look at with startup is the main power switch. This is this big rotary switch right here. So just turn that from the 0 to the 1 position. And at this point you'll see the screen chart at startup, show a little bit of gibberish, but uh, that's normal, it takes a minute to start up. Uh, next thing to do is turn on the cooling water. We have the main cooling water valve right here. So just run that as you turn on any other. Your little water flowing. And then open the drain valve. There's uh, this clear tube here. And that'll drain a little water out and it'll just, uh, it goes into a floor drain. Uh, the next thing to look at once you get it uh, turned on is It'll say oil temperature below 30 C. Uh, it's preheating right now. Uh, you'll show your temperature deviation of negative 200 at your actual uh, end stage. And you're going to want to wait until this gets up to 42 degrees C. And that takes about 20 or 30 minutes. So while that's doing that, I'll just talk about some of the other uh, things that are of interest with this machine. First thing to look at the menus on here. Uh, Ones we're going to be mostly interested in is this MM is millimeters, and uh, that's the uh, menu we start at by default. Uh, this shows the plasticizing limit, and what that is is essentially how much plastic you're going to inject on each cycle. Uh, and this is again, it's given in uh, a linear dimension in millimeters, and the reason for that is that's the distance the cylinder travels. It's a 28 millimeter diameter cylinder. Uh, so, just calculate that uh, diameter out to get a cylinder height for volume. Uh, two other uh, items of interest are you have your pressure settings here and your temperature settings there. Uh, the, the settings it uh, comes with when it's turned on are good for most cases. Uh, there may be just special cases where you have a particularly long or narrow part where the plastic cools too quickly, uh, doesn't fill the mold, uh, or pressure may be an issue if you have a very thin cross section and it doesn't have enough pressure to get through it. Uh, to actually set values on here, um, very intuitive, you can scroll up and down to the arrows, uh, type the number in the block, and this is your enter key. Another interesting thing about this machine is it's mostly German, uh, so your ja and nine, those are your... Uh, yes and no commands on the machine. Uh, but it's other than that, it's mostly in, in pictures and then again the screen's all in English, so nothing really to worry about with that. All right, with the basic settings all set up, uh, the next thing to look at is the plastic supply. Uh, plastic is just added into this large stainless steel hopper here. You have a window, you can see we've got some pellets in there right now that's just ABS plastic. Uh, as far as setting it up to actually feed, 
All you gotta do is take your hopper, slide over that hole there, and that opens it up, feeds into the hopper. Uh, uh, yeah, once you get down to uh, almost done, I guess as far as ME324 parts, about 10 parts left. Once you get down to that level, you can go ahead and cut off the supply and just operate off of the uh, what's in the auger already. Slide it over like that. And if you need to empty the hopper, you can slide it all the way over to this chute here and have it spit out the back. Uh, now, as far as the actual plastic supply itself, it's good to make sure that that is good and dry. Otherwise, you'll have all kinds of defects in the plastic. Um, easiest way to do that, heat it up in a heat treating oven to about 90 degrees. Uh, there are two safety switches on the injection molding machine. One of them is on the main door. The other one is on this uh, door right here. Um, now notice on this one, you can kind of shut it. Feels like it's shut. You got a gap there, not enough to set the switch off. So you got to wiggle it around. There you can kind of hear it click on the switch. So it's good and flush there. And that's how you know that the, uh, the top guard is down. And once that's in place, there's uh, relatively little risk uh, and the door is shut. Um, and once those two guards are in place, then it can actually operate. Uh, another thing to note is the on switches for the uh, pump. Uh, you just hit this white button there, and now the pump is on. Um, and again, that's sort of the, the main operation switch. Also, if you happen to set uh, an alarm for some reason, uh, no need to panic on it. Uh, all that does is automatically turn it off. So if that light there comes on for some reason, like for example, you leave the door open too long and semi-automatic -automa load, you have about a 90 second limit, and it sets the alarm off, all you got to do is correct the fault and hit the white button. Uh, these power buttons are also useful for if you uh, want to, say, leave for lunch uh, or a relatively short period of time, not, not overnight or anything, but just an hour or so, and you don't want to have to re, uh, preheat the machine. You want to leave it preheated but just uh, stand by, you can just hit the red button and uh, that will just turn the pump off and uh, it'll be ready to, to bring back in action really quickly. Uh, another problem with humidity is you see how it uh, leaks a little plastic out of the end. Also bear in mind this is very hot so I'm only going to touch it with these aluminum grabbers. We'll have a little plastic leak out of the end here and that's just from the uh, steam expanding. It just causes it to ooze a little bit. So before you try to injection mold anything, you want to make sure you got that cleaned off. It's also a really good idea when you start up to just purge some of the plastic out. So once it gets heated up, you can just cycle it a few times. And it's the same purging process used at the end to help clean out the machine. Uh, looking at the control panel here and uh, operational modes, again, this is all, uh, all done with pictures. So it can actually be a little confusing because of that. Uh, when it starts up, it'll be in this mode. Uh, this hand is manual mode, which makes sense. Then you have two different automatic cycles here. Uh, this one with a stop right next to there where my finger's at, that little stop symbol there. Uh, that one is a one cycle semi-auto, and this is a full auto uh, with no stops in it. You only use a full auto if you have uh, reliably working extractors. Uh, but for the most part, what we're doing with anything you're gonna do in ME324, this one cycle mode will be uh, what you'll want. Um, and you're also gonna need to be familiar with some of the basic aspects of manual operation, and we'll get into that here in a minute once we get the uh, machine fully warmed up. Starting in manual operation here, uh, first thing we want to do is purge some of this plastic out. So first let's move the ram back, that would be this button right here, and just push that and it moves it back a little bit. Uh, then you can auger it. And already augered actually, and purge it. And it's going to snap and pop a little bit, and that's all the steam escaping. Um, and auger. Run it back, and you can watch the actual value if I can get the glare off of it. And then just repeat that cycle a couple times. again, hit the auger again, 
and that light comes on now. And you go ahead and run it back. And that light there will turn on as soon as your uh, actual value there gets larger than your plasticizing limit. Uh, before you actually go to run parts, I uh, just have to clear the nozzle again. So again, just like before, um, we got a little puddle here from what I was purging out of the system. Uh, you can just hook it like that, uh, give it a little tap, see this is kind of soft there. It's pretty warm here, so I might just set this out of the way just to right now and let that cool. Um, and then just clean the nozzle off again. And once the nozzle's cleaned off, it should be all ready to run. Uh, once you get the uh, nozzle cleared out, uh, just make sure you got your mold all set up exactly how it's going to need to be, um, and then you're good to go. Um, have your top covered down, put your door shut, and then you can switch to semi-auto mode, and to get it to start, just hit your mold close button. And then, you can see the mold clamp down, the ram moves in, um, and then it starts injecting, you can see this go down, uh, the actual value should go down to about zero. Wait a couple seconds here, it's got to come down. Mold unlocks, it opens, and you can open it. Remove your part pretty quick with this guy. And all you gotta do, it's on one cycle semi-auto, and you shut the door and it just runs again. It repeats the cycle. One thing to bear in mind uh, when running it in semi-auto mode is, is that uh, you have uh, 90 seconds after you open the door uh, to remove the part um, to get the door shut again. If you don't, it'll uh, trip the light. Uh, and if that happens, then uh, just as mentioned before, all you really got to do is uh, is just hit the uh, white button to turn the pump back on. Uh, if you don't want that to happen, you, you know you're going to take a little longer, you got something that's hard to get out, just switch it to manual mode and then you're good to go. Uh, once you're done making parts, uh, you just clean the, the nozzle out first, just like was mentioned before. Uh, and then once your once your plastic cools down to the point that you feel fairly solid, it's not molten, it's probably not too hot then. And then you just go ahead and just for safety, still use the tongs with a little hook to pick it up and just throw it in the trash, and that's all there is to it. Um, and after that, uh, you can get on the shutdown procedures. And once you've fully purged the plastic out of the system, you can go ahead and shut the system down. Uh, to do that, it's uh, basically the reverse of turning it on. You just turn off your main switch here. Switch it from one to zero. And then you can go back here and turn your main cooling line off and close the drain valve. And then just make sure you Clean up uh, any other trash after yourself. Pick up any of the plastic uh, that is scooged out once it's uh, cooled down, and put your molds away. So that concludes this instructional video. I hope you've had as much fun as I have. So until next time, I'll be the same boy, again. And if you have any other questions, don't be afraid.